time, we're searching far and wide in Edinburgh. He'll have them up in Dundee. We're rolling the dice. Let's not tell Kirsty. No. In a market that's a game of speed. It's already had an offer from someone who hasn't seen it. Wow. And skill. You need to knock down that wall. You're speechless. <laughs> <laughs> so we're rewriting the rule book. I don't want two questions. It's cosy. And playing to win. Wow, look at that. Oh, my goodness. That's a proper smile. We're in Edinburgh. I'm with Sahel and Sadia, who are determined not to be blown off course by this hot market. And I'm with Freya and Elliot, who are desperate to leave behind their Aberdeen rental in favour of a new life and a new home here. I can't say I blame them. Bursting with history, culture and handsome architecture, it's not surprising that Edinburgh is in demand. But Scotland's capital city is also its most expensive place to buy, with average prices of around £323,000. That's a 13% increase in the last year. And the market is sizzling, with demand outstripping supply and properties selling within just a few days. To be in with the chance of capturing their own castles, buyers need to get a march on. When my couple, engineer Elliot and operations director Freya, met ten years ago, it was a case of mother knows best. When Elliot's mum had a jewellery party, which he was at, and <laughs> I got dragged along with my mum, and basically, if you can imagine, the next ten years as sliding doors, moments, right place, wrong time. Eventually, their mum's matchmaking paid off, and Freya and Elliot were married last year. Having lived with family to save during lockdown, they're keen to kick off married life in a place of their own. We now rent in the city centre of Aberdeen. It's been good being central and close to the high street. Too close to the local. <laughs> Too close to the local. <laughs> no such thing. The couple are keen to strike a balance between having a social life and settling down. Trained painter-decorator Freya wants a home she can put her stamp on and as a new stage of life beckons, the goalposts are moving for football mad Elliot too. I love the game, but my hamstrings can't, can't handle it anymore. There was actually a funny bit in your football open day, wasn't there? There was a brochure that said he's pulled his hamstring more times than his wife. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Which was true. Funny. It was funny, yeah. <laughs> So while Elliot might need to think about hanging up his boots for good, the pair are planning a transfer to the capital. We love Edinburgh. We love Edinburgh. We're big foodies, so ultimately it's got great choice. Every time we go there again, we fall in love with it more and more. We're excited. Yeah. We're really excited. Just to start a new chapter, I think, in a new city. And with the freedom allowed by remote working, the world or Edinburgh is their oyster. My plan will be to have three days in the office up in Aberdeen and then two days at home in, in Edinburgh working remotely. Another important part of the puzzle, their own front door. It would just be nice to be able to have our own entrance just so it feels like home. Not an easy ask in Edinburgh, where tenement flats with shared stairwells make up a significant chunk of the housing stock. And with properties selling before they can make the five-hour round trip from Aberdeen to view them, it's no wonder this pair need our help. It's so competitive and it moves so quickly with, with, with struggles. With you by their side, Pip, they've got a fighting chance. I'll do my best. I just have one burning question. Whilst you say you've been house hunting for a year and a half, you haven't actually managed to do a viewing. We feared that you might pick up on this. <laughs> <laughs> What's been going on? Being in Aberdeen, and by the time we see something, and then by the time we make it down to the viewing, by the yes. next day, it's sold. It's 
And what are we looking for? So we don't want a communal area entrance. It'd be nice to have our own entrance to our own home. Traditional features, the bay window, yeah. the beautiful cornicing, yeah. obviously for Elliot to have a study. And then we go on to the outdoor space. Just enough to have a table and chairs. And talk to me about areas. I know you're going to say all the popular ones. Yeah. <laughs> Everyone does. Yeah. I want a main door, high <laughs> ceiling. In the I want best area. morning side. <laughs> yeah. Well, that's top of the list. <laughs> OK. Morning okay. Side. Might you consider taking something that's a bit further out of town to get cheaper or to get more space. I don't want to be too far out, but I would be willing to have train lines, tram lines, mm -hmm. access into the city. What about budget? Where are we at? We're topping out at 475. We can't get into a, a bidding battle. My nervousness is that you haven't seen anything yet. We're going to have to learn quickly. OK. <laughs> yeah. We can learn we quick. We can do that, yeah. <laughs> Come on, keep up. <laughs> Running shoes at the ready, Pip. You're going to need to sprint. For their £475,000 top spend, Freya and Elliot want a two- or three-bed home. Ideally with garden, period features. Close to the buzz of the city and preferably with its own front door. Freya and Elliot have asked me to search around central Edinburgh and in the popular areas of Stockbridge and Morningside, but will consider pushing further out for the perfect pad. Well, I'll be focusing on the west side of Edinburgh, in areas within commuting distance to the centre. My couple, Sadia and Sahail, both work in financial services. A technological twist of fate with a dating app brought them together six years ago, while Sahail was living in Ireland. At the time, the app had an update, so the distance filter wasn't actually working, which is how I ended up matching with Sahil in Ireland. There was a filter for distance. That's and true. It, there, there was, but it led you to go really far. So I set mine. I cast it out <laughs> wide. <laughs> Mine's wasn't. Mine's was local, like very local to Edinburgh. That is like 10 it, miles. Yeah. <laughs> One wedding and a stint living in Ireland together later, the pair turned their attention to securing their marital home. Rather than battle the pricey Dublin market, they decided to look east and moved back into Sadia's starter flat in Edinburgh a year ago. We perhaps naively thought that moving back to Edinburgh would put us in a better position. And although it has, <laughs> it's a very, very tough market. There's been a real shortage of houses on the Edinburgh property market. Their hearts are set on a house in a city made up of mostly flats. And they've been outbid on two properties already. These two need to get serious about climbing Edinburgh's property ladder. Oh, and get to grips with exactly where they want to live. We just want to be somewhere that we can ideally walk in, if possible, or a short commute into town. I'd be happy to walk an hour. Stepping into the next phase of their lives, the couple want a grown-up home with three or four bedrooms. But in this tricky market, they're trying to be pragmatic. We've moved away from having to have a south-facing garden, because we'll never buy a house if you're that particular so as long yeah. as it's not north it's the new <laughs> is it updated agenda yeah, <laughs> compromising can be hard but i'm sure you'll ease them into it gently Kirsty. i have to say i'm a mean person and when i heard that you'd moved from dublin to edinburgh hoping <laughs> that the market would be easier <laughs> A little hollow laugh oh, came yeah. out. What does that house look like? I say house could be a flat. You're not anti a flat. No, we are anti a flat. One hundred percent. Hundred percent. We would have bought a flat already. Yeah. So, is outdoor space a big issue? Huge. It is absolutely. Not to be fussy, but we also want a garden that's got sun, so not north facing. So glad you didn't say it had to be south facing. No. no. What are we talking on budget? We're looking at around 600. There are compromises at every budget, never yeah. doubt that. Yeah. I won't take you to see anything that requires a compromise unless I really believe in it. We're happy with that. And I think okay. we should probably get on with it. You need to find some halfway houses that can win them over. I'm hot on the trail. With their 600,000 ideal budget from savings and a mortgage, Sadia and Sahel want a house with three or four bedrooms and a garden that faces any way but north. Within an hour's walk or easy commute to the city centre. What have we done to deserve this? Well, it's not a bad gaff, is it, as they go? I think we should just move in while no-one's looking. Well, and avoid doing the job that we have to do this week. OK. <laughs> what, do Listen, you got? what do you got? She's from here, he's from Ireland, yeah. and they've decided not to look in Ireland, but to look here. My couple 
haven't seen anything. So no. they're living in Aberdeen <laughs> and they haven't viewed one property. So they're going to have a very sharp learning curve. Or at the same time, they're going to have to be... I'm not sure you can have a sharp learning no, curve. A steep curve is a ski jump, isn't it? Oh, the, the, the long distance yes, one? Yeah. yeah, not a little thing. Yes. If it was just a little thing, everyone would be able to find their own houses. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> ski jump or slippery slope? To master the Edinburgh market, our house hunters will need to be savvy with their sums. The Scottish system means properties for sale must have a home report. Like a survey in other parts of the UK, this contains information about condition and will include a valuation, usually higher than the marketed offers over price. And in the red hot Edinburgh market, homes can sell for 10 to 20% more than the home report value. Calculators at the ready. For Freya and Elliot's first ever Edinburgh viewing, I brought them to Swanky Morningside, known for its vibrant cafes and shops. Now, we're going to kick off proceedings in your number one spot <laughs> of Morningside. It's beautiful. It's, it's beautiful, but it's loud. It's going to have to be pretty special inside, just to offset maybe the main road. Yeah. Well, it's not main door. OK. That requirement is costing you about £100,000. OK. Noted. Yeah? Are we still friends? Yeah. We're still friends. <laughs> well, later, we'll see so. <laughs> If you're not careful, Phil, this pair are going to show you the door. They haven't seen what's behind it yet. This first floor flat has all the original features Freya and Elliot love. At the front, the kitchen has ample entertaining space and there's a separate lounge. To the back, there are two good-sized bedrooms and a bathroom. And a box room provides office space for Elliot. There's also a shared garden at the rear. Honor offers over £325,000. It could sell for around 370, over 100 grand under budget. So up on the first floor, we have two bedrooms that way. That's the home office and the kitchen diner. It's a good size. I like the period features. They're asking for offers over 325. Wow. So it's in a completely different pricing league to one that might have its main front door. Yeah. yeah. OK. What did you make of the common parts? Quite right. dark. Yeah. I see why the main door adds. I don't think they're ready to give up on the private entrance just yet. Maybe. But with properties in this postcode in such short supply, there isn't a suitable main door home available in their price range in the whole area. The living room again, it's got the lovely features. You'd entertain through there. Yeah. yeah. It would be the two of you sitting in here of an evening. Yep. Yeah, it's yep. very cosy. Have a wander round, and I'll meet you out the back in the, in the garden. Okay. okay, lovely. Thank you. I'm hoping that the location and space here could make up for the communal entrance. Oh, nice and bright. With a wardrobe space. While they might be warming to it, there's no doubt this is a reality check for Frere and Elliot. Sharing them it does very clearly demonstrate that if you lose the main front door requirement, it is still possible to buy a very nicely proportioned, beautiful flat in Morningside with a price tag of offers over 325. It is possible. It is a good size study. Good storage. Yeah, it's good storage. Yeah. They are saying all the right things but I'm not sensing any buying signals yet. But the price is amazing. Yeah. I thought it would be more than it is. Mm -hmm. I would sacrifice the location for the main door. It ticks a lot of boxes, but I guess the... Not enough. ..our priority, number one, is, is missing. Fine. Let's move on. Um, let's not tell Kirsty, just between us. Yeah. <laughs> we loved it. <laughs> <laughs> nice try, Phil. And that goes for the flat, too. So it has to have a private entrance, which I can find. It just won't be in this postcode. We're in Edinburgh with a tale of three cities. My couple, having recently tied the knot, are moving south from Aberdeen to put down roots here in Scotland's capital city. And my couple thought finding a home would be easier if they left behind Dublin's fierce housing market. <laughs> Hollow laugh. <laughs> Shame not, no. <laughs> Freya and Elliot are embracing remote working with a move from Aberdeen to the city they love. 
but their first Edinburgh viewing was a non-starter when the lack of private entrance proved to be a deal breaker. I would sacrifice the location for the main door. My couples, Sadia and Sahail, have struggled with the shortage of houses coming onto the Edinburgh market. For our first viewing, I've brought them to Shandon, near where they've searched already and a 45-minute walk to their jobs in town. A big tick in the location box, but there is a compromise. This is not a house. I've gone ahead and got the keys, but I'm shaking my boots a bit because no flat was very categorical. But this has got four bedrooms and a staircase and its own garden. And I'm sitting here and waiting, in part because it's raining and I don't want to get my hair wet. Mm, I know, I hate it when that happens. And having to kick off a search with a curved ball is no fun either. But if Sadia and Sahel can see past the flat aspect, this property could score me a home run. The first floor has a spacious lounge with original features a large kitchen, utility room, two bedrooms and a bathroom. If going upstairs to sleep makes it feel more like a house, they'll be pleased to find two more bedrooms and a shower room on the upper floor. At the back is the garden, and whilst it does face northeast, it's private. On it offers over £450,000, it could sell for upwards of 510 well within Sadia and Sahail's 600 grand ideal budget. Oh, it's a, no, that's not a happy face. I can tell that seeing a flat the first time is not a good move. It has four bedrooms. OK. And two of them are upstairs. Ooh. Nice. It has stairs. OK. It also has its own garden. Wow, OK. Oh. I think the fact that it's got two floors mm -hmm. and it does have a private garden mm -hmm. means it's not something we should rule out immediately, mm -hmm. yeah. but it's not, a, it's not a house. But it does have all the advantages of one without the price tag. It's been around. Look at the garden. The yeah. garden, the view, the size of that window. Yeah. And the ceiling height. Yeah. I mean, so hell, you're a tall man and you couldn't even come close to touching yeah. the ceiling. And sometimes in houses, that's not so much the sure. case. It's not what they pictured, but this property has a lot to offer. I just hope it's enough to spare me a flat no. Yeah, very small. OK. This would be like an office. It can't be a bedroom. Do I think there is some open-minded consideration of compromise going on? Not at the moment, I don't. But you never know what they say when they come back from upstairs. There's no bath. You could put no. one in here. Yeah, but this shower would be over it. Yeah. They're not exactly gushing over this one. More like pouring cold water. There's only one room that's a double room. I think that's more what puts me off rather than the fact that it's a flat. Yeah, I think the flat thing, surprisingly. Surprisingly, um, yeah. We were... Especially because it's got its own private garden. Yeah. 475. I'm led to believe that something north of 500 in the 510s is a realistic mm. okay. figure to consider. It's not a solid no, but it's oh. not an immediate yes. Oh, no. okie doke. I can live with that. Okay. <laughs> Moving on. A hint of compromise, but as good as this place is, I think only a house will make them happy. Freya and Elliot said they would consider pushing out from town. So, to provide the private entrance they want, for our second property, we've come to leafy Juniper Green. On the outskirts of Edinburgh, it's just a 20-minute bus trip to their beloved Morningside. And look who's shown up to lend a hand. I'm just going to make myself look respectable. So, your couple, where are they looking? <laughs> um, Morningside, Stockbridge. Oh. Oh. There's, a bus, there's a bus stop over the road to get there. No, well, I no, no, I'm going to tell you something. The lovely estate agent who I met this morning, she said, oh, I love Phil. She said, I love how he just totally ignores their location That's requests. That's harsh. That's yeah. not true. <laughs> it's so true. I, I can't believe I've, it. I've, I've, I've taken their lead. He'll have them up in Dundee. <laughs> Hello. Hi. Hi. Do Hi. come on in. We have a main door. <laughs> we have a main door. And that's not all. At the front, this spacious ground-floor flat 
has the original features Freya and Elliot want, as well as four bedrooms, one of which could be an office. At the back is a modern extension which provides a large, stylish bathroom, separate shower room and a sizeable open-plan kitchen sitting room. French doors open onto a tidy private garden. Its honour offers over £360,000, which could cost Freya and Elliot around 410000 of their 475 budget. Ceiling height, cornice. Oh, wow. Cornice. Absolutely beautiful. Shutters. In coming out of town a little bit, in doing so, you get a massive main door. Yeah. And you get the four bedrooms. It is lovely. How about Juniper Green? We like what we see. Feels like a nice area. Yeah. Mm. Yeah, I'm intrigued. So far, so good. But this is a home of two halves. And then this is the addition, the back addition. It's a great space. How do you find the change in sort of character as you come into the extension? I think because kitchen extensions normally are, well, the new modern part yeah. of a house anyway. Yeah. So for me, it doesn't seem strange that it's mm. newer. Yeah. It's priced, offers over 360. It is slightly overlooked. I'll, I'll be honest, I have, I have clocked that. Mm. I'm hoping the swish bathroom and spacious bedrooms will compensate for the overlooked garden. But that might be wishful thinking. Good size. Yeah, it's a really good size. I don't know how I feel about the outside space. No. I think it feels like we're in their garden yeah. more than ours. Yeah. Quick pip, chuck a quid in the well. Did you see what was in the bathroom, Phil? Yeah, the washing machine. Yeah, I took a picture of it. It's a clever place to have a washing machine, isn't it? I told you so five years ago. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Hello, hello, hello. How'd you get on? How'd you get on? Space-wise, it's, it, it's really good. But I can't get away from being so close to the, the house behind us. It's close, but it's, it feels like it's in. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. It's quite intrusive. But I love the main door. No, yeah. I got that right. <laughs> <laughs> I was buzzing when I saw them. They may not adore this property, but at least they're getting warmer, Phil. I'll get this search on the boil yet. My first property with Sadia and Sahel failed to deliver the space they want to settle down in. So I've bought them to see something a bit more grown up and I haven't had to come far. Like Phil's last property, this house is also in Juniper Green, not an area Sadia and Sahel are familiar with, but I'm hoping this handsome villa could win them over. So here we are, a semi-detached villa which has gone into the roof with a garage and own parking. Like it already? Oh, that's what we like to hear. We're getting off to a great start, and there's lots to like inside, too. Downstairs, there's a roomy kitchen diner, living room with bay window, bathroom, and two bedrooms, one of which has been set up as an office. Upstairs, there are two more bedrooms and a shower room. There's also a good-sized garden with scope to extend out the back. On offers over 520,000, it could go for close to the top of Sadia and Sahel's 600 grand ideal budget. It's got high ceilings, it's light. I like it. I like Are it you? too, yeah. Yeah, good it's first impression. Oh, good. OK, What's just open impression? that door and have a look at the garden. Do we know what weight this? Well, you've got to bear in mind is the way the garden faces would, would be really significant if there wasn't light coming from either side. But it is north facing. Not direct, not due north facing. No, no, no. It's northwest. Okay. But it does mean the house is southeast. You've got light in other places. Yes. This is a long garden and a low house, so it will get the sunlight. I hope that will stop this viewing going south. And I've got another surprise in store. Now, I'm about to say something that is the kind of thing that makes everyone put their head in their hands and go, no. The wall upstairs between the two bedrooms mm -hmm. is tiny. You could very easily take down that wall. OK. And have the most enormous, gorgeous bedroom. That's so nice. <laughs> and then if the time came when you needed to change that, it wouldn't cost you that much to reinstate the wall. Go and have a look. OK. You just can't resist the lure of the sledgehammer, can you, Kirsty? What can I say? I love a property with flexibility 
and with two more bedrooms downstairs, Sadia and Sahail really could make this house work for them. Nice. Nice. Yeah, it's a good side room. Wow, look at that. Oh, my goodness. It's a lovely view. I love it. I like it a lot from what we've seen. I don't know the area, but it seems to be commutable yeah. at least, not too far out. It's always a gamble, introducing house hunters to a new area, but it seems to be paying off. This is a great house, but it's definitely older. It feels like the next step. It's a lot more expensive. You'd have to pay probably around 80,000 quid more for this than you would for the previous property, which is quite a big figure. And Chris, do you think you could take this wall down and make it Could make a it master. one huge, yeah, so absolutely. And what a bedroom that would be. Sounds like you're not the only person itching to get that wall down, Kirsty. What do you think you'd have to pay for this? To pay? For 600, a... realistically. We're talking about 595, but yes, 600. Yeah. Yeah. Very possibly. Valuation 540. Worth it. Oh, right, OK. It feels more like a home. Yeah. So does that leave us with a, a, a maybe? Yes, definitely oh, yeah. maybe. Definitely maybe. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Music to my ears. And with one more property still to see, I'm ending the day on a high note. This time, we're in gorgeous Edinburgh. Sadia and Sahel thought they would struggle to compromise, but rather like the Edinburgh weather, they've been open to alternatives. Does that leave us with a maybe? Yes, definitely oh, yeah. maybe. After a rather underwhelming start with Freya and Elliot, I've really got my work cut out. I can't get away from being so close to the, the house behind us. Relocating from Aberdeen, Freya and Elliot are looking for a main door flat with scope to work from home. But they've been struggling to even view properties in the fast-moving Edinburgh market. Our third property is in Hillside, a stone's throw from Edinburgh landmark Carlton Hill and awash with trendy shops and restaurants. We haven't seen anything they've gone gaga for just yet, but I'm hoping this split-level flat might just turn the tide. Well, lovely to be back in the city, I imagine. Yes. We have a ground floor main door flat. Nice. Lovely. Yep, very nice. Oh, Phil, Freya looks smitten already. There's a lot to love about this property, but some vision may be required. On the ground floor, there are two double bedrooms, two shower rooms, a living room and a kitchen diner. While downstairs, there is currently a self-contained flat offering bedroom, shower room, a second kitchen and access to the shared garden. Honor offers over 445,000 and with a home report value of 450, hopefully Freya and Elliot's position as chain-free buyers could secure it within their 475 max budget. Through that lovely main door. Come on through. Now, we have an unusual property. So we've got high ceilings, we've got loads of character, we've got three bedrooms, three bathrooms, and, believe it or not, two kitchens. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's been a short-term furnished rental. So far, I quite like it. Yeah, I really like it. 445 offers over. It's been on the market one week, and it's already had a, an offer from someone who hasn't seen it. Wow, OK. OK. They seem to like it, but it sounds like they're not the only ones. Wow, this is nice. Yeah, it is nice, yes. I'm going to let you have a look at the other bedrooms, and I'll meet you downstairs. If they can see past the unusual layout, this flat has bags of potential. OK. This is pretty. Yeah, it is. Yep. It's going well so far. It's fantastic to see some excitement in their eyes. Really nice size. This could be a guest room. Guest room. Yeah. I like it. And it's also good to know that I haven't lost my touch entirely. Don't worry, Phil. I'd be the first to tell you. This is a good study space. Yeah. Another nice fireplace again. And still high ceilings. Those original features are seducing them, but there's a curveball downstairs. We have a self-contained one-bedroom flat. I'm just Please. trying to think about, obviously, we, we don't need two kitchens. No. Could you perhaps have 
This is the main bedroom and have a really beautiful bathroom and a dressing room. Yeah, almost make this a bit of a, a suite. On balance, what do you think? Yeah, a bit of a game changer. I like it. I like it as well. <laughs> After you. you are well and truly back in the game, Phil. But I think my next property might just offer something even better. Sadir and Sahel were keen on our juniper green villa's space and flexibility, but unfamiliar with the area. So, for my next property, I've brought them to Kostorfin, a vibrant suburb with great links to central Edinburgh, and a visit from a certain someone is just what the doctor ordered. I got a cold. Poor you. I know. <laughs> Poor you. I know. You'll oh, well. survive. I know. I You'll still be able to house hunt. Yes. Till my dying days. You're such a comfort, Phil. Good morning. Good oh, morning. So here we are. It's not the busiest road. And you've got a park next door. But which you've is got lovely. a park. And shops and pubs and it's things. It's lovely. Like it's a lovely yeah. community. We actually love Kostorfin. It's not far from where we are now. Let's get in the house. Lovely. Off to you. Thank you. I'm hoping that Sadia and Sahel will love what's inside this house too. Fully renovated by the owners, downstairs currently has two bedrooms, a dining room, living room, galley kitchen, and a smart bathroom. Upstairs, there's a large main bedroom, another bedroom set up as a study, and a shower room. At the back, there's a low-maintenance garden. On the market for offers over £460,000 and expected to sell for around £540,000, it's well within Sadia and Sahel's £600,000 ideal spend. What I want you to do is not think about any of the rooms in this house as they are at the moment. This room has a sofa in it. It doesn't make it the sitting room. A lot of flexibility, which is the joy yeah. of this yeah. house. Yeah, the first impressions are good. Yeah. It seems nice, yeah. I think it's very bright. Well, why don't I take Sadio upstairs? Yeah. Good luck, Phil. I could be heading for two in the running here. There's a bedroom on the right and then head left. So I know sometimes you guys work at home. Don't yeah. You? It works extremely well as an office. Yeah, I like the desks around the corner. So it's office over 460 at the moment. OK. How are you finding the whole kind of search process? We found it difficult just being outbid mm. on everything we looked at. We are always advising <laughs> buy for the long term. Mm. But actually, in this market, that, that's quite challenging. I think it would be ideal if we found our forever home, but we also sure. accept that this might not be the time and it might be an interim home, and that's OK too. Very pragmatic but I think there's scope downstairs to make this place work for the long term. So, if you stand here and see what's ahead of you, at some point, if you're going to make it a true family house, you need to knock down that wall. And then one of these two rooms would be your bathroom. I can imagine it as a kitchen. Uh, I think it'd be really bright. You've seen three properties. Where do you feel this one comes? I think I preferred the second property we saw. To this? It's an area that we didn't even consider. Yeah. So to still be thinking about it is quite interesting. And just, yeah. I've been thinking about like the views from the bedroom. Yeah. Yeah. Okie dokie. This is a great house in an area they'd asked for, but it seems Sahil can't get our second property out of his head. Small, but it's a good use of space. It's cosy. Yeah, it's cosy. It may be snug, but it comes with a fantastic herb garden. Oh, here's some mint to clear your cold. Oh, thank you very Freshly much. Freshly grown and harvested by my own tree. Harvested, i.e. stolen, picked in someone else's garden by you. <laughs> yes. Harvested. That's a new word for people who knit things. Harvesting. I was only trying to help. <laughs> thank you. They are being quite positive about this. Yeah, but they, they're into property number two. Sadia and Sahel are serious about finding a home they can grow into. While this house offers a lot, I'm betting that practical Sadia will also prefer the second house. You're still into property too, aren't you? 100%. It's great for us as it is, but we could do more to it in the future if we that's wanted it, to. I, I think, think that's a really, really big box to it's be potential. Ticked. OK, then we will go and see it. Three viewings in, and we have a clear front runner. So it's back to Juniper Green to see if property two still feels like a winner. My property three had Freya and Elliot grinning from ear to ear. But I want to beat it. So I brought them to see something in another of their favourite areas, Comley Bank. On the doorstep for buzzy Stockbridge's markets and cafes, it also has green space galore. 
You seem to be happy and smiling. I'm very happy. <laughs> Why is this? Because <laughs> we're in Conley Bank. And I'm pleased to say I have a main door, best of breed flat for you. You're speechless. <laughs> <laughs> well, we like we like the look of it. It's beautiful, lovely view. Yeah. Beautiful door. We're excited. That'll do me. Come on. <laughs> I'm hoping this pedigree property will wow them inside too. Behind that main front door, there are two good-sized bedrooms, a bathroom and a box room. At the front of the flat is a lounge with a bay window and study nook, while towards the back, a spacious kitchen diner looks out onto the communal garden. There's also a small private front garden and all the original features Freya and Elliot love. On the market, at offers over £435,000, I hope that Freya and Elliot's chain-free position could help secure it within their 475 maximum budget. Beautiful hallway. Wow. Beautiful. The formal front room. It's got the working fireplace. Oh, lovely. It's got the ceiling height. It's got the working shutters. Yeah. Lovely. So it's absolutely peachy. Yeah, it is. It's beautiful. Quality. Yeah, really liking this film. <laughs> That's a proper smile. Brilliant. It's beautiful. They are asking for offers over 435,000. It's got a home report of 460. OK. So it's going to be all in. Yep, OK. It's a first-class flat, and those come at a premium. The kitchen diner. I mean, perfect. Friends come around for supper. Yeah. I love the height as well yeah. in here. It's, it's beautiful. This feels like a home more so than the previous property. Mm. Yeah. Have a look around the bedrooms. You might just be onto a winner here, Phil. Main bedroom. Good space. Nice and bright. Yeah, it is. Obviously, look at that view as well. Yeah, stunning. So nice to see happy faces, real excitement. That is just fantastic. I love it. It's nice that the window's really cute. Yeah, it is. Long and narrow. Yeah, it is. It's got the character they wanted, but some modernising is required. The flat doesn't have central heating. They, he's using storage heaters, which seem to work very well, but it would be costing a fair bit of money. I think the central heating thing has worried me slightly, yeah. just because that's an additional cost. Top end of the budget, but we still need to upgrade kitchen. You don't no. need to. No. Yeah. You could do, and it would be nice to do yes. at some point. Yeah. Let's meet up tomorrow morning, clear heads, Get a good night's sleep. <laughs> this flat has almost everything they wanted. I just hope the cost of making it work for the long term doesn't put them off in the short term. In Edinburgh, having been keen on both properties three and four, Freya and Elliot have reason to be cheerful. You seem to be happy and smiling. I'm very happy. <laughs> But with both near the top of their budget, I've left them with some thinking to do. Sadia and Sahail liked our property too in Juniper Green, an area they weren't familiar with. So we're back for a second look. What do you think on reflection? Love it. Love, Love it. it. It's Love definitely it. got that curb appeal. Right, okie doke, let's get into the house. But this place was always a hit from the curb. It was that northwest facing garden that was missing the mark for Sadia. Coming back here on this beautiful sunny day, do you feel warmer towards it? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. I think it's nice to see outside here as well. Like the It's a lovely big sun. garden. Yeah. And since the sun's shining on this search, I'm leaving them to it. Good size. It's good size. It's a grown-up neck of the woods, this. And this is a proper grown-up house. It's good space, deep storage. It's like they want to get onto the third step of the ladder. Skip the second step, get to the third step, which is no bad thing. It makes the most sense to buy for the long term, and these two look like they're ready to move in. Do you want to go and chat about this house? Yep, yeah, that sounds good to me. Okie dokie. Still a hit on the second visit, it's evergreen in Juniper Green. With the super competitive Edinburgh market to contend with, I'm not celebrating just yet. Freya and Elliot like properties three and four, but with both requiring changes for the long term, they've been back to the Comley Bank flat to see if they can find some clarity.
Can I ask where your heads are at with the third property I showed you in Hillside? We've kind of discounted it. Seeing the layout of Comley Bank, it worked better for what we're probably looking for and expecting. Have you moved on from concerns about the heating? The more we've thought about it with avenues around it, it's maybe not so much of a stumbling block. The Comley Bank property has won their hearts, but securing it could be tough. On the market, it offers over £435,000. It has a home report value of 460000 Mortgage providers will typically only lend the value of the property, so in order to make a competitive bid, buyers need to be able to cover the difference in cash. And with stamp duty at around £20,000, Freya and Elliot will struggle to cover that and their deposit. What would you bid? I think we have to offer what we can, which is home report value. I guess that's what we have to do. I'm not here to encourage anyone to spend more than they're comfortable doing, but I would hate to see you lose it for the sake of a few grand. 465. Could you get to 465? Yeah, somehow. Yeah. All we can do is try. OK, let's try it. Yeah, please. It's 30 grand over the asking price, but in this market, the flat could sell for much more. Say some prayers. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, Brody. Um, lots of soul-searching going on at this end and raiding of piggy banks. <laughs> and they are maxed out at 465,000. Mm -hmm. Yeah. They would move at his timescales, they'd offer complete flexibility. Whatever he needed to do at that level, they would agree to. Thanks, Brody. Do your best. Bye. It's a big ask. All we can do now is wait. Having been outbid on two properties, Sadia and Sahel have been bruised by the Edinburgh market before. But I'm hoping that if they're inclined to make an offer on our property too, a third time could be a charm. Where are your thoughts? We really love the house. We obviously had to really think about the area. I'm excited about it. I think we'd like to make an offer on the house. Yeah. Offers over 520, which we know mm -hmm. tends to be a low figure. Yeah. Home report 540. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But it's been on the market a couple of weeks. There haven't been any offers. I think we should start at 565. 565. That's my opinion. And we, we will negotiate. 566. Let's start at 566 because I've, I've got no doubt that they'll come back on okay. that. Hi, Judy. I have had another sit down with my clients. It's the top end of their budget. They can be very flexible on move date, and we hope, therefore, that 566,000 wouldn't be entirely unacceptable. Thank you, Judy. OK, bye. With a mind to negotiate, Sadia and Sahail are in the game. While with Freya and Elliot, it's a waiting game as we anxiously hang on to hear what the vendor made of their maxed-out offer at £465,000. If this doesn't go our way, what are we going to do? You can't change the budget, because that's what the budget is. Yep. So it's the area mm -hmm. yep. that's got to be played with. Yeah. It's good advice, Phil. Yeah. But hopefully it won't be necessary. What news? But that is all that's in the pot, sadly. But really appreciate your efforts. Thank you. Bye-bye. I'm afraid not. Well, thank you for trying. Yeah. There'll be another one. Yeah. You'll find it. We can't cheers it. We just, we'll just have a drink. <laughs> we'll just down it. Get the, get the tequilas in. So I'm afraid for Freya and Elliot, it's commiserations, not celebrations, for now. With Sadia and Sahail, we've offered five hundred and sixty-six thousand pounds, twenty-six grand over the home report, as a jumping-off point for negotiations. Hello. Hey, Judy, how are you? I will just confirm that with my client. 1st of July, date of entry. Yes. They are thrilled to say yes. OK, thank you. Bye. Yes. Who got a house? You got a house. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> Cheers. Oh. Deal done at 566. No haggling required. I'm thrilled to have secured Sadia and Sahail their dream home. Seven weeks on, back in Aberdeen, Freya and Elliot have been taking stock. 
We learned a lot with Phil. The houses that Phil had shown us and the properties, I think, allowed us to see what we could afford in those areas and what ones we preferred. But for now, they've decided to take their search slowly. Because things are, are expensive just now, we, we feel it's better just to, just to hold tight and see how the market plays out. And weigh up their priorities. Well, the amount of space we were, we were getting in, in Edinburgh was, was certainly uh, limited with the, the areas that we were looking at and filled. So potentially the criteria could change for something slightly bigger. Um, however, we, we still love Edinburgh. Yeah. I hope it won't be long before this pair are setting up home in the city they love. Sadia and Sir Hale's purchase is coming along nicely and they expect to be moving in in just over a month. Really looking forward to just having a bit more space to host friends, to have family come and stay with us. I'm getting yeah. some nice stuff for living, I'm getting yeah. a nice new couch. Now that they've fought the Edinburgh market and won, they can't wait to enjoy the spoils. We were absolutely delighted for our offer to be accepted. Yeah, it felt quite surreal. It was a big relief. I think the first thing I'm looking forward to doing is um, buying a TV, big 17-inch TV. No. <laughs> <laughs> One thing that this pair can agree on is that bagging their new pad was all thanks to you, Kirsty. I think Kirsty really helped us with the long-term vision of what the house is now and what it could potentially look like in the future. We're really excited to be yeah, to move into our new home and start our, our next chapter together. Absolutely. And I hope it will be a very happy story. If you'd like help finding your next home, then we want to hear from you. You can apply online at channel4.com forward slash take part.